praise the Lord. I want you to note that this 2021 is going to be an exciting year for you. It's going to be a lively year for you. Let me share with you one of the blessings the Lord is laying on my heart. Let's start on a blessing note. Um, Leviticus 26 verse 9. God said, I should tell you, Island Church, I will have respect to you. You know, Proverbs 3, 9. You respected God. You honor him with your substance and the first fruit of your increase. Now, the result is Leviticus 26, verse 9. God says, please make sure your amen is sharp and loud. I will respect you. And make you fruitful. I will multiply you. And what will I do? establish my covenant with you. This is what God is saying. I will respect you. You know, yesterday afternoon, he walked up to my study and he says, I am pleased with every giver. The Lord is pleased with you. He's happy. He's happy with you. He says, I'm pleased with every giver of first fruit in this house. And Leviticus buttress, he said, I will respect you. You will be fruitful. You will multiply. I will establish my covenant with you. That will be your heritage in the name of Jesus. Make sure you are in church on Thursday as we take the interesting journey of manifestation. This month, you will shine. You will manifest to your world. Let's take a mystery of first fruit, part two. The mystery of first fruit, part two. Proverbs chapter three, verse nine to ten. Honor the Lord with your substance, and with the first fruit of all, not some. So, if you are working and you are doing business, you pay first fruit of all. If you are a student and you get pocket money, you pay first fruit of all. And the church say, Amen. Can I hear a smiling amen? amen. You now, when it comes to money, people are so. Uh, but here we preach it with ease. God is not hungry. Psalm 50, verse 12. He says, If I am hungry, I will not tell you. Because the word is mine and the fullness thereof. If I were hungry, I won't ask for food from men. I don't eat what you eat. God does not spend naira. Neither does he spend dollar. This God created the man who thought about dollar. You know, one person, it came to his mind first that there should be a means of exchange. So they created currency. The day you understand the mystery of covenant wealth, you will know that money is nothing. Can I hear amen? In fact, in famine, money fails. In Egypt, when money failed, they went with double money. Yet they still cannot buy. They sold themselves to Joseph, to me. When money failed in their hand, money can fail. What you have today, it has wink, it can fly away. I tell you. But when you honor God, no wonder he said, I will have respect. And without quoting any scripture, he said, tell Highland Church member, I am pleased with them. The Lord is pleased with you. He is pleased. He is pleased with your obedience to covenant practice. In one of our strategy sections in leadership of this ministry, one of the strengths of our ministry is that people, they are willing givers in this church. You don't coerce them. They give in obedience to God's word. They are not looking for Greek interpretation. Somebody is still doing a detailed study of Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. Honor. What does honor mean? Substance. What does that mean? First fruit. What does that mean? And he's doing cross-referencing. He's looking for parallel translation. You know, uh, comparative translation. But he has not concluded here. 
But there are people here who just swallow the word law. And God is promoted. Somebody shouted me yesterday. Now, first fruit has taken him also outside the country. There is a connection between global grace and giving grace. If you have the power to lay it down, the global grace is activated. So this guy who chatted me yesterday, he said, Pastor, I look forward to tomorrow's service. He is outside the country in the Middle East. And he said, I look forward to tomorrow's service to be blessed in the first fruit service. And he said to me, I remember my first fruit in this church was 40,000 naira. And he sent me a screenshot of what he paid into the ministry account. One million naira. He has moved from 40,000. You know, there's a God who he sees the days of little beginning. Somebody, your first fruit this morning will become your regular Sunday offering. Yeah. So, so is a pastor. I mean, how do you reconcile somebody who paid 40,000? He, he chatted me, he said, Pastor, my first first food here was 40,000. But see what the Lord has done through me. And I rejoice in my spirit. And he said, I remember in that service, you were given analysis that people don't prosper by savings. That you gave an analysis of if you want to buy a brand new Land Cruiser, I don't know if anybody was in church that day. He said, you gave an example that if you save 5,000 every month, he said that time Land Cruiser was 20 million naira. How much is Land Cruiser now? And I remember I told you that time that inflation. So if you save 5,000, 5, you would still be catching up with your Land Cruiser. Maybe that should be like eight years ago. Yeah, Land Cruiser was about 20 million that time. So, if you save 5,000 every month, in a year, you will have saved 60,000 naira. Okay? So, in 10 years, you will have saved how much? 600,000 naira. 20 million and low. Okay? <laughs> and the price, I mean, a brand new Land Cruiser today cannot be less than 50 million. And that brother told me, he said, Pastor, the only reason I connect with that example you gave us like eight, nine years ago is because all the directors in his company, they give them Land Cruiser as official car. So he was hiring that car at that time. And he said, if he had been saving 55000 what will his first fruit be today? We don't increase by withholding. We increase by scatter. There is he that scatter it. Yes, it increased. But there is he that withhold more than is necessary. It turned into penury. It turned into poverty. Please, just obey the word of God without struggle. Don't struggle with the word. That word changed my life. Our pastors here, everybody has got personal testimony of the heart of God. If we obey and you see, this thing is, is personal. If husband obey, husband will prosper. If wife obey, wife will prosper. They don't do family first food. Too. <laughs> that daddy has given it on our behalf. You got to do it your own. Let mommy do our first fruit. Let daddy do his first fruit. And this church say amen. amen. You know, and... Before you know it, you begin to see the family increasing on every side. On every side. You will have testimony. Your wife will have testimony. You will have testimony. Can I hear amen? amen. There are ladies in this church who are loaded. Who? Loaded sisters. Who don't wait for daddy to do nothing. They are just blessed. That's what I prophesied many years ago. I told the ladies here, I said, I see you doing continental trade. Where you don't depend on any man. You are self-sufficient. Doing great things in your own right. You are not looking for one man to carry your load. You, 
You know, there are people like that. that I just want somebody that can carry my load. Can, you can do it. Where you're, you're in your career, you are blossoming, increasing on every side. That's what Proverbs 3 9 says Honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruit of your increase. Then the result of verse 10 will now come to pass. He said, Then shall your barn be filled with plenty. And your press shall burst forth with new wine. That's where we stop in the first service. When you give first fruit, you see plenty and new things. Plenty. The bank account never going down. And you know, every time God wants to change a man's story financially, he calls for a sacrifice. Sacrifice is the way to turn your captivity around. By reason of this year first fruit, there are certain plague in your life that we cease. Second yeah. Samuel 24 verse 25 says so. Immediately David gave that sacrifice. The Bible says, and the plague stayed or ceased. The problem stopped. There are certain things that we stop. Wickedness stop. Nightmare stop. Causes averted as a result of sacrifice. The Bible says, David build an altar unto the Lord and offer burnt offering and peace offering. So the Lord uh, smell it. The Lord was entreated for the land. The Lord just fell in love with the land. And the Bible says, immediately God smelled the burnt offering and the plague was stayed from Israel. People no longer die as a result of of the sacrifice of one man. Evil, shame, reproach, delay from somebody's life this morning stay forever. Amen. Cease forever Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Sacrifice is a captivity turning exercise. When you want the, the, the captivity, generational causes to break and to stop, write an altar of sacrifice. And first fruit is one of those sacrificial giving. It is a sacrifice to give a whole month's salary. It is a sacrifice for you to give uh, a whole month salary as a businessman and say, I give it to Jesus. I, I just give it to God. Because in the first place, I receive it from him. I know where I was coming from before God increased me. I know what my finance used to be before this increase that God has brought into my life. So if you, if you approach God with that mentality before you know it, he increase you because it's a covenant. The moment you cut this covenant with him and on a yearly basis, you come to give him his part. You come to renew. It's like insurance policy. You, you will not enjoy cover if you don't pay premium. You agree? And you come on a yearly basis, Lord, this is my annual first fruit. And God says, wow, this is my son. I will change your level again. I bring you into new things. This is my personal reality, my personal experience with first fruit. Since I started giving first fruit, you know, I didn't come here dressed like high priest without my own first fruit in my hand. The way you give your own, I have given my own. And God said to me what I should give. Since last year, December, I said, oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Because he asked me to top it up. Don't just give 100%. Because there is a need in my house. And I came back here, announced to all of you, I said, make your first fruit this year a sacrifice. To us, our new facility that we are going into, and um, watch what God will do in your life. Watch the kind of increase. I have seen in Pastor Lani that when you give first fruit, before you know it, new things, new clients, new opportunity, you leave that level of struggling. I tell you, this is my own personal reality. You don't struggle. No pain. And people don't understand what is he using. And how come this man does not struggle like others struggle if the iron be blunt? You exercise more strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. There is 
easy way in the kingdom to prosperity. It is the giving way. There is he that scattered, yet increase it. Listen, that position you have, you thought you are in the management level, but you are not there yet. God wants to give you the business. And not just one, he wants to give you multiple business. Yeah. Businessmen and women in this church, I tell you, 2021 will be a great year for you. Yeah. Expansion, 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 increase. God is not a talkative. He said, I am pleased with you. And when God is pleased with you, he's coming with baggages, gifts, opportunity, increase. You will have customers you have never met and they will be giving you contract in millions. People you have never met and, and they just give you, they, they will trust you. I've gotten a job before where they gave me money to go and buy a car and I have not resumed. And I said, what if I run away? I had official car and they wanted me you know, it was my second job after my first official car was given to me. So, and I, they gave me the employment letter. I said, it means if I resign here, I have to drop their car for them. So, you people need to find car for me. I said, no, our own policy, we don't give people car here. He said, but we will bend the rule. We will give you money to go and buy a car. Don't let anybody know that. It, buy it in your name. You, you know, so... So they gave me the money and when they gave me the money, I said to myself, what if I just just, just vanish? <laughs> I know resume. <laughs> this thing I'm sharing will speak in your life. Amen. Strength ever. Strength. Strange. Strange. I got another job many years later and when I met the executive chairman, he said, your office has an, uh, an official car and the amount for the car for your office is this amount. You have a choice of these four cars to choose from. Do you want an undercut? Do you want this? Do you want this? And after I left, I did like this, like my former voice. And I was thinking, me, that fell into gutter in Friday here. Option of four cars to pick from. Can only be God. Honor the Lord with your substance and the first fruit of your increase. Then your barn be filled with plenty and your press burst forth with new things. You want to see new things? There is no there is no gimmick. You must be a giver. And your giving will open you to, to another dimension. I call it qualitative and quantitative blessing. Quantitative are the one I'm mentioning. Cars, house, all these things I'm talking about. Money, increase in salary, new job, new opportunity, new client, multinational client, and all of that. These are things you can measure. But there are qualitative blessings. Things you can't see with your eyes. Like peace of mind. I wish above all things that you prosper. And be in health. Even as your soul prospers. Peace of mind. Joy unspeakable. Enjoyment in your marriage. Your husband is not a prayer point. You are not praying about strange women. <laughs> Money can't buy that. Peace of mind. That's qualitative blessing. As a result of, as a result of your giving. You just enjoy peace. Like a river. The families at ease. Healthy children. Healthy husband. Healthy wife. Godly spouse. You know, that's what God is saying this year. As you honor me with your first fruit, I give you qualitative blessing. Something money can buy. No matter how rich you are, money can buy children. Say, but Pastor, what about IV health? <laughs> he can't buy children. People who have done IVF, go and ask them. There are people who have done several IVF that did not work. It is the blessings of God that make rich and had no sorrow to it. 
your first fruit this year will bring qualitative blessing. Amen. Good, healthy children into your life. Amen. Blessing, favor, honor, joy, celebration. That's what heaven is saying to us. He said, I will have respect to you. I will multiply you. You will be fruitful. This is the word of the Lord for you. I want you to position yourself to receive as we come, make confession this afternoon. Some of you are going to make double confession. You have made it in the first time. You will make it again. Lord, I know where I'm coming from. That is, some of the things I'm sharing now is what I say to God when I'm giving my own first fruit. Lord, I know how I used to carry fire. One day I jumped into Molwe from Fadei here, you know, and I pity myself when I entered the Molwe. You know, those kind of um, targeted jumping. You, 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 you know, the moon is coming and so many people are finding you boss for so everybody is looking and still is coming, everybody is looking you, you, you go inside some of you don't know what I'm talking about, right? you jump inside then when you go inside then you there is nowhere to sit to you know, <laughs> you carry all this bag like this, you'll be holding something uh, until I get to post office bus stop that's where I was coming from. So when I now bring my check to God, dancing, I say, God, I was a Syrian ready to perish. You are the one who saved me. I know how, how things were before I stumbled on this secret of the kingdom. Before I enter into this covenant with you. And how you have been of tremendous blessing. There's testimony I can't share with you. It will intimidate you. So I swallow it myself. I keep enjoying myself. But you see it. You know that this man is pushing nothing. <laughs> and it's true. No pain, no struggle. God is good. You know when we say God is good, it's in different shade. It's too good. It cannot fail. Join this winning club. Don't be smart in your own eyes. Pastor, there's nothing you preach. This one, this year. Me, they saw that see how about this year. <laughs> God is not hungry. I encourage you to join the winning club. <laughs> uh, don't be smart in your own eyes. In fact, Corinthians says, the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. It's too faithful to fail. God is too faithful. Don't be wise in your own sight. Hmm? Just follow what God is telling us. He's too faithful to fail. He's too faithful to fail. There was a battle too fierce that one of the king, an unbeliever king, the, the, the Moab king, faced Israel, Judah, and Edo. They came against this man. This man woke up into trouble. They gave him attack, defeated him at home. Praise God. And uh, this man consulted and he took. 700 skillful soldiers, the king of Moab. He said, let's go and face these people. And the Bible says he tried and he did not break through. 2 King 3, 26 and 27. 2 King 3, 26 and 27. And this man could not break through. He fought with the 700 men and the last statement he said, they, but they could not. They could not. To break through even through the king of Edom, which is the weakest king, you know, king of Israel, Judah, and Edom. And he tried to break through to Edom to escape, but he could not. So in seven, he now did something remarkable. He said, So this man, when he could not prevail, he took his eldest son, his firstborn, who would reign in his place and offer him as a burnt offering upon the wall. That is remarkable. What that means is that he has tried, but these three nations too powerful, too much for him. So he took his firstborn 
who will reign in his stead. And he put him upon the wall. Upon the wall means for everybody, including the enemy, to see. And he set him on fire. And the Bible says, there was great indignation against Israel. This is God's people. Israel is the one attacking him with other two nations. But immediately he set his first fruit on fire. There was anger against Israel. So they departed from him and returned to their own land. Even God was angry with Israel. Because a stranger gave a first fruit. <laughs> and Israel had to retreat. They have captured the man already. But for setting his first fruit on fire, Israel went back. And the, the battle just changed with first fruit. First fruit make enemy to retreat. Battle to stop. Pastor, what the man did, was it right? I am not talking about that. But I'm talking about somebody taking his prized possession. His jewel. The things he cherish. This is the person who will reign in your stead. And you set him on fire. Just for you to get the favor of a God you serve. This is what first fruit draws. Even the God of Israel could not fight for Israel again. When, when he set that first fruit on fire, the Bible said there was great vexation. Another translation says indignation like we have just read. Anger of God against Israel. Why did you come against a man who understands the principle of sacrifice? He set his firstborn on fire and Israel retreats. Judah retreats. Edom retreats. And the man was free. Because of first fruit. First fruit turned everything around. Everything. Captivity turning point. So, this morning, many of you have in tears given your first fruit. Please note, you are not doing, just doing something that is casual. This is the turning point in your life. Turning point in your finance. Turning point in your career. Turning point in your ministry. Turning point in all that you do. Turning point where you will not need to borrow from any man. You, you are loaded. You are peaceful. You are enjoying God. No stress. No tension. And listen to me. Anywhere you want to go, you can go. Any country of the world you want to go. Please, understand this principle. You will not be rushing to travel anywhere. Yeah, you won't be rushing. Anywhere you want to go after now, they will give you the visa you require. Any country of the world. Because you are in covenant with God. Somebody came to my office two weeks ago and said, Pastor, the message you preached today, you were talking about me. I am the one I wanted to travel and they didn't give me visa. And I told him to his face. I said, they didn't give you because you want to run away. <laughs> I'm sure you don't like to hear that in pastor's office. You know? If you want to run away, they won't give you. I'm telling you now. You must follow purpose in this church. If you want to port... This trouble is too much. I will not stand you travel and be struggling over there. The struggling over there is worse. Say, Pastor, I prefer that one. <laughs> Let me go first. <laughs> I'm warning you now. <laughs> but in this place, I will tell you the raw truth. Follow what God is leading. If you follow what we share, reposition yourself, you will prosper in Nigeria here. When it's time to go, you will go with dignity. You will, you will relocate with pride. You see, one of the testimonies we read today, he said his Canadian citizenship was approved in record time. Sp speed. That kind of traveling I want. I don't want the one that you go there, they give you six months visiting. Deliberately, you know it must expire. Will die here. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Don't die there. Go. If he's visiting, come back. Can I hear amen from this church? I think that's somebody healing this morning. Don't run away. 
do things properly. Do it properly. If you do it properly, you will enjoy life. You will be, you will be, you will, you will, you will manifest to your world. We are not talking about cutting corners. Do it properly. And you know it will be well with you. So I tell you, there are people by reason of the exploit they are doing in Nigeria, they cannot live permanently abroad. I know somebody who has a US green card, is a US citizen. But the kind of volume of business he's doing in Nigeria here, he can't spend two months in America. Even though the law says he cannot spend six months outside as a green card holder. So in six months, he runs in, he comes back. This is where the Malacca is. His wife, children, I think the children are even graduate from university now, working and all of that. He was sponsoring education from Nigeria. Giving the wife, he told the wife, just sit down, train the kid, don't work at that time. And the wife later pursue her career at the master's level, and I think she's also doing very well. But all the money was coming from Nigeria here. As at 15 years ago, when we were looking at his books together, he had Pan Nigeria 19 branches of his business. And his turnover, as of 15 years ago, was not less than 15 billion. You see why you can, he's not thinking about going to America. What's in America? For him, for that man I'm talking about, America takes his money. And it's true. Those of you who have traveled before, when you go for vacation, you go $4,000, you go and blow everything in Dubai, $4,000, blow everything in America, you come back here. You know, and when you come back, your high will now come down and say, why did I even go to this place, Seth? <laughs> Who sent me? <laughs> Who sent me? <laughs> you didn't come back with any business opportunity. You just go there, they'll put you and say, hey, safari, hey, hey. I enjoy it. They go to, they collect the thing you have. In fact, well, at the point of entry, they will say, how much did you bring? this <laughs> country. How much did you bring? He said, I broke $2,000. I said, you're in Lang. Wow, she died. We're well, eh? <laughs> <laughs> looking for people like this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In this land, those of you hearing me this morning, you will prosper. Amen. You, will, you will excel. Amen. You will excel. This is the principle. With this, you have peace of mind. You don't struggle. If it's time to change your job, it's time to change if it's time for you to start a business, you start the business with ease. You profit in that business with ease. You don't struggle. If it's time to also relocate abroad, we relocate abroad. Hallelujah. No struggle, no pain, no cutting corners. Clean prosperity. That's what God is bringing your way by the reason of this first fruit. And you know, this first fruit is like a test for somebody. God is testing your Abraham. After 25 years of waiting for a boy, that boy now has become a teenager. Let's assume Isaac was 15 years old. Bible scholar says Isaac was between 16 and 17. Let me even pick 15 so that we have a round figure. Abraham waited for 25 years. He started working with God at the age of 75. He didn't give birth until 100. On, uh, 15, that's 25 years of work. Then, 15 years of the boy now becoming a teenager. 40 years. Then one morning, Genesis 22, New King James Version, verse 1. Genesis 22, verse 1. The Bible says, and the Lord, Genesis 22, verse 1, New King James Version. It came to pass after these things, that's the 40 years, that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Verse 2 now. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, the one you love. Go to the land Moriah, offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will tell you. God just simply said, this thing you have waited for for 40 years, kill him. I want to eat him. Praise the Lord. 
Hebrew 11, 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried or tested, he offered or killed up Isaac. And he had received the promise, offered up oh, his only begotten son. Verse 18. So 17 told us that Abraham actually killed Isaac. He offered Isaac. Of whom he said, this is Isaac that shall, and that in Isaac shall your seed be called. Isaac is the one that will give you a generation. Verse 19 now. And he offered the same Isaac. But the Bible says he accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. From whence he was also received in a figure. Do you understand this scripture? What this is saying that Abraham, the only reason Abraham killed because verse 17 says he offered Isaac. As far as God is concerned, it has been credited into his account that he has killed his boy. Abraham offered Isaac, killed Isaac. He said he count God too faithful that if I kill him, God can raise him up. He said from whence he was also received in a figure. What that means is that I was also dead. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead. And figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. What that means is that Abraham himself, when God gave him Isaac, he was dead. You remember? Abraham never considered his own body dead, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. If God can give a dead man a son, if I kill the son, he can raise him. So figuratively, he killed the boy. He said, was I not dead when you gave me? Now, if I kill him, you can raise him. If you can give a hundred year old man a boy, then you can raise a boy and give life back to him. It was counted for him for righteousness. And in Genesis 22, God said, verse 12, Genesis 22, the same Genesis 22 we are reading, and when Abraham was about to kill the boy, but Hebrew said he has already offered him. In heaven we have received Isaac's dead body and we have given him life back. The Bible says in 22, Genesis said, don't lay your hand. Abraham was about killing that boy. He said, neither do anything to him. Remember, before we got to this level, Abraham had tied Isaac to a level that he cannot escape. This is a maker will not agree. So, ah, Pastor, I, I, I always listen to you, but this, uh, this is too expensive. Uh, it's too expensive. <laughs> Let us reason together, Pastor. Uh, uh, what kind of worship is this? You tie my leg, tie my hand, cover my face. And, the, and Isaac was an obedient boy. <laughs> if we had to be somebody, we escaped. <laughs> because he got to the mountain and said, Sir, I see fire. I see wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, God will provide and he lifted up his knife. And verse 12 says, God said, no, don't touch him. Don't even do anything to him. He said, now I know you fear me. You have been working with me for 40 years. It is now I know. So all this, our relationship for 40 years. You are too faithful to fail me. I want to touch your money. <laughs> now I know you fear me. Search your heart, whether you are still in the faith. Just the two of us. I make room for two. You are now in Jesus. And he's saying, give me one month salary. Now I know that you fear me. He said, now I know that you fear God. Seeing that you have not withhold your son, your holy son from me. Remember in New King James Version, verse 1, the Bible says, and God tested Abraham. It came to pass after this thing that God tested Abraham. This year, first fruit is a test. 
And no wonder those who pass the test say, Tell Island Church, I am pleased with them. It's a test. God does not need it. What will God do with Isaac? Doesn't need Isaac. But God did test Abraham. This morning, we're going to make our confession. We're going to pray. And I want somebody whose faith is on fire. What you have done, you, you have only tell, told God how you trust him. How, how you have confidence in him. And you just release yourself to say, God, have your right of way. Anything you want me to do, that's what I will do. I know the principle of first fruit is the principle of the best and the first. If it is not the first and the best, forget it. It's not first fruit. That's why Cain offering was rejected. Cain brought any half fruit. Genesis chapter 4 from 3 to 4. He brought any half fruit. He just brought anything from the field. He just brought anything. It came to pass. For the harvest, Cain presented some of his crop as a gift to the Lord. But look at what Abel did. The Bible says, Abel also brought a gift. But let's define the gift of Abel. The best of the firstborn lamb from his flock. Cain brought some. He just went there, tomatoes, and he took it to the friends, friends of God. But the Bible says, Abel brought the best of the firstborn. Another translation says he bought the fat thereon from his flock. He, bought, he looked for the best, the fat among them. Abel brought the firstborn of his flock and of the fat portion. And when God saw the, the, the horrible offering that Abel was bringing to him, even before Abraham sacrificed, God says, I will accept it. I will smell a good savour of this. I love this one. And it's not in the quantum of the gift, but the heart of the giver. So, your first fruit is not you are giving 1 million, you are giving 10 million, you are giving 50 naira, you are giving 40 naira. I've just told you of somebody who gave 40 naira. Do I know he gave 40 naira? I didn't know until yesterday that he was chatting me and said, Pastor, see what first fruit has done in my life. It's not in the quantum, but your heart. And whether this is a true first fruit. If it's not a true first fruit, why not you have, an op you have a heart to, to search yourself and say, God, I'm going to make it good. Because first fruit can be rejected. It is either it's first fruit or it's not. And when first fruit is properly devoted, things you have been struggling for years, God, new things begin to flow opportunity begin to flow. This is going to be a special year for islanders. It's going to be a special year for, this, for us this year. It's going to be a year of blessing, prospering in the midst of scarcity, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of difficulties. Others may say things are not working, but in your hand, things will work. Can I hear amen? amen. Doors will open. Opportunity will come. Everywhere you go. I want us to spend time to praise God. I give this my first fruit dancing. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for what you have done for me. I thank you for your hand so strong upon my life. I give it cheerfully. I give it in joy. I have properly devoted my first fruit. Lord, let it be acceptable in your sight. I thank you, Jesus. I bless you, Jesus. I give you all the glory. Can I hear amen from you? Yeah. Maybe somebody is here, Pastor. Please give me something from the New Testament. All these ones you are reading, Genesis, all these ones, Old Testament. Romans eleven sixteen. Romans eleven sixteen. Romans 11, 16 says, If the first be holy, the lump also is holy. If the root be holy, then the branches are holy. What the scripture means, says, is that the first determines the rest. How you devote the first will determine the watchful eye of God over the rest. If the first be holy, then the lump also be holy. If January is properly devoted to God, you will enjoy February to December. What you do with the first determines the rest.
That's why you see family. If the firstborn struggle, the firstborn did not go to school, others will struggle. Others will not go to school. And if somebody get born again and try to break that genes, in the life of that born again, you will still be seeing some element of struggle until the person fully come to the knowledge and probably liberate others in the family. If the first be holy. And that's why in Exodus he said, everything that opened the mattress must be given to God. All your firstborn, male or female, belong to God. So this morning, Many of us, we have cast our first fruit. Many are going to cast their own in this second service. Let's properly devote our first fruit to God. Rejoice. Thank him. Nobody is putting any gun behind you and say, give your first fruit. The only thing is that we are sharing the word of God with you and we are saying, make up your mind and do as occasion serve you. Can I hear amen? amen. All eyes closed, all heads bowed this morning. Is there somebody in this service? Pastor, please pray for me. I want to move close to this God you are sharing about. I love the God that you preach about. I want to serve him. I want to be born again. Or oh, I've been born again. I backslided. I want to move close to God. Can you lift up your right hand? Let me pray for you. If you are such a person, lift it above your head. Today is your day. It's your day. It's your day of prosperity. It's your day of progress. Please don't be ashamed. Let that hand be above your head. I'm going to be praying for you in a jiffy. Leave that hand above your head. If you are thinking and your mind is telling you your hand is supposed to be up, lift it now. In the name of Jesus, lift it now. Lift it now. Lift it now. If your hand is supposed to be up, lift it now. Lift it above your head. Don't be ashamed. Today is your day. Your day of salvation. Your day of prosperity. Your day of healing. Your day of deliverance. I wait one more time for that person who is still thinking. Don't allow the enemy to rob you. If in your heart, he's crossing your heart, the pastor is talking about you, lift up your hand right now. Lift it above your head. Those of you whose hand is up, I want you to say with me, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, have mercy on me. Wash me by your blood. I declare Jesus Lord over my life. No more to the sin. No more to the devil. I'm a child of God. I'm born again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. For all of you whose hand is up, keep that hand very high right now. I cover you in the blood of Jesus. By your declaration, this morning you are safe. You will not go back to your vomit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Now, if you said amen to that prayer, a sleep has been given to you. Your friends who gave you that sleep after the service will come to you and pick it from you. Those of you online, the email of the ministry is on the screen. Make sure you send us your details and we will be praying for you. Island Church, stand on your feet. Lift up your first fruit. It's time for us to make confession. We're going to sing his praise. We're going to sing his praise after we make our confession. Thanking him for his goodness, his mercy, his loving kindness. Rejoicing in his presence. If you gave your first fruit in the first service, uh, you can lift up your, your right hand. And those of us packaging our first fruit, make your check payable to Ireland Church. If you want to do an online transfer, the details is on the screen right now. The details is on the screen. You need an envelope, please call any of the ushers and they will give you an envelope. Anywhere you are this morning, Lift up your offering. Lift up your first fruit offering. Begin to magnify the Lord. Say something nice to the Lord right now. I want you to make your confession now. Thank him. Thank him for how he has helped you. Where you are to the glory of God. Give him praise. Give him worship. Give him honor. Thank him for his grace speaking in your life. Thank you for all he has done for you. Thank you for where you are coming from. Thank you for where you are right now by the grace of God. Not by power. Not by mind. But by his grace, Island Church, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Give God praise. Give him 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 glory. Now let's worship him. Give him glory. Hello, 
worship him this morning. first fruit. Some of your classmates, they are dead. Um, so you come to this church this morning and God put a seed in your hand. Why don't you lift up your voice and worship him? We just want to say we thank you, Lord. We just want to say Give him praise. are going to go around, take the offering from you, and um, uh, give God quality praise. As they come to you, you dance with your first fruit, then you cast your first fruit. Can we sing his praise right now? Let's watch it. Hallelujah. I have a father that will never ever pay me. I have a father who will never ever pay me. Jesus is my father. He can never ever fail me. Rock of ages, never ever fail me. Never ever fail me. I have a father who will never ever fail me. I have a father who will never ever fail me. Somebody worship this.
Lift up your two hands and worship him in the spirit. Magnify the Lord in the spirit. He's done so much for us. We give you praise. Jesus. Mary name. We worship. Now lift up your two hands and receive the blessing. I declare open doors for you. Just like the Lord has said, he will respect you. Amen. You'll be fruitful. Amen. You will multiply. Amen. Increase upon increase. Amen. That's your portion. Amen. From now, you have praised God. You have given your first, off, your, your first fruit offering. You begin to see new things. Amen. Oh my God. You begin to see plenty. Amen. No lack. Amen. No shame. Amen. No reproach. These two end lifted, whatever you lay them upon shall prosper. Increase and progress only. Your business will blossom. You will not see heat. Scarcity is over. In the name of Jesus. In the midst of famine, you will prosper. You are exempted from evil. 
exempted from lack in the name of Jesus. In your life, shame is over. God will give you asset above your qualification. Asset above your age. Favor is yours. Increase is yours. Everywhere you go from now, grace will speak. Favor will speak. In your career, you will prosper. Receive divine ideas. Sellable ideas. Profitable ideas. Marketable ideas. In the name of Jesus. Your ideas will see the light of the day. The power to do, receive right now. Everyone who need money to execute their vision. As I pray right now, let help arise for you. You will get help from people you don't know. Help from strange places. Your expectation for 2021, you will surpass it. Your expectation will not be cut short. Among your peers, you will stand out. You will be 10 years ahead of your peers. 10 times better than your colleagues. You have been blessed, you cannot fail. Generational causes will not work in your life. Every cause in your family, they are hereby averted. In the name of Jesus. From now, you won't look for money. Money will look for you. Say amen and pray in tongues. God will give you what money cannot buy. Somebody now receive peace of mind. Receive joy. All your heart desire money cannot buy. Receive it now. Divine protection is yours. You will not be kidnapped. Hey, say amen. In your family there shall be no loss. You will not bury anyone. You will not bury your parents. You will not bury your siblings. In the name of Jesus. Now say amen like a soldier. From today, progress only. Profit only. Who is saying amen? This year, no wrong investments. Only profitable ventures. As a priest, I pronounce this blessing upon you. They will come upon your storehouse. Come upon your bank account. At no point in this year will you be stranded. February to December, you will shout for joy. You will sing for joy. In the name of Jesus. This blessing upon your life, they are irreversible. Everywhere you go from now, favor. New jobs. New things. New house. In this Q1, change of accommodation. All your heart desire, heaven has granted it. Open your eyes. I am pleased with you. Say the Lord. So go home. Go home today. With that reality, the Lord is pleased with me. I guided it jealously. The Lord is pleased. Particularly those who have made covenant with me by sacrifice. I am pleased with them. Say the Lord. So you go home, reassure yourself. God is pleased with me. All through this year, God is pleased with me. Praise the Lord. Take your seat, put your hand on your chest and say it quietly. Don't let your neighbor hear. The Lord is pleased with me. Don't let your neighbor hear. My father is pleased with me.